Good morning, everybody, and welcome to HJ Goes Live with Charlotte Harding, our Pulp Riot guest artist. And today's session is sponsored by Pulp Riot. I'm Charlotte as well, editor of HJ, and we're going to be talking about the fantasy collection today and all things vivid colour. Welcome, Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm amazing, thank you. How are you doing? I'm really good, thank you. Happy Monday, everyone. Um, I'm here today. I'm going to be talking you guys through the new fantasy collection from Pulp Riot. My name's Charlotte, as you've already heard, um, aka the Hair Mermaid on Instagram. You guys may already follow me. Um, I've prepared a small demonstration today just to give you guys an idea of some of the colours in the range. Um, so I've done half the dum dummy head here so you can already see. I'm just going to be applying some colours so you can see the new range. I have played around with them. Some of them I've used straight out of the tube without diluting them. Through the front here I've also created um, a different shade. You can pastelize them. Some of you may already know this. Um, so basically in the range there's four colours. Um, I'm actually using three. This is my three favourites. Um, in the new range it is the Fantasy Collection. There is a red, which is pyro, which you can see nice. here. Um, you've also got sorcery, which is like a really indigo-y, inky, blue purple, which I absolutely love, obviously. I was going to say, is that modelled by yourself? I haven't used it on myself yet, but that's my next thing. Next I one, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Also Guardian, which is a really, really nice green. It's almost slightly yellowy green. It's really, really nice. Um, and then Elixir, which is the new purple shade. So I've used um, three of the shades. I've used Elixir, uh, Guardian and Sorcery. Um, this is actually a really good tool for those of you that haven't seen this before. This is something that we use when we're choosing our colors. It's called Paint by Numbers. Um, we use a paper uh, shade chart actually, it's more sustainable, but it's also an easier for the client because with these colours, you're not just going to get the colour that you see, the colour that comes out of the tube on every single person's head is going to come out completely differently. So this is why the paper is brilliant because you can show your clients how the colour is going to turn out. You've got ranging from a base 7, 8, 9, 10, so they can get more of an idea of how it's going to look on the hair. Um, so yeah, I'll start with my demo and if there's any questions, obviously just feel free to pop through. And how would you kind of describe the fantasy collection if you had to kind of sum it up in? Oh my God, words? this is one of my favorite collections. It's everything that I love. Pyro just reminds me of like a really fiery dragon. You've got like sorcery, fairies, kind of potions, lotions. It's very, it's very kind of, the whole fantasy thing really yeah I just love it really really rich colors a lot to play around with a lot of tones you can intermix all the tones with each other as well in the range so with this new collection you know the world is your oyster really you can kind of create different colors as you're going along um but yeah I love it it's it's really good the colors are so bold they're so pigmented um, but yeah, some of the colours in the range as well are like a UV, UV colour, so they do work under like a UV light as well, mm -hmm. so, which I have done here. I've just mixed the tiny little dot of that in with the elixir and it's just made like the most vibrant limey greeny yellow. So if anybody was going to a festival, anything like that, that would be amazing because it just glows underneath the UV light. Love that at the root here I'm starting on the back sections because I've used the darker colors first so my sections have actually gone on a diagonal it's something that I do normally like to do because depending on how the client wears their hair you get a different effect showing through so I do quite a lot of uh, retro styles as well so like if people wanted to do like victory rolls and things like that when you roll that up you're going to see all the colors coming through yeah. So I'm going to start at the back. What I've done is I've used sorcery on the root and then elixir on the ends. So you're getting more of a melted effect. And then you've got the green coming through here. So I'm going to start first of all with the darker colours at the back and just work my way forwards. So applying on the root. And I think for those of you that haven't really done many vivid colours before, I think sometimes it's quite scary to stylists that haven't used them before. But if you think about it, in a, in a way, almost as if you're applying a tin. So this is almost a little bit like the way I would potentially do like a root smudge or like the beginnings of 
if you were doing a really a really soft kind of balayage like you're just applying the root first and then once you get that all on the other colors are smudging through to the ends the consistency of the product is really really creamy so it does work very well it blends in very well to the hair we always apply to dry hair um with the semi-permanents they do they do contain natural ingredients they've got um one of the main ingredients is quinoa so this is a natural protein and this does help to even out the porosity of the hair as well which is particularly handy especially because a lot of the pulverite semis work better on pre-lightened hair so obviously when somebody's had their hair bleached sometimes that can that can mess with the porosity so with the quinoa in there that does help to balance that all out and it gives a really even color result so the hair actually ends up feeling very soft very nourished um, once you've actually put the colour on, sometimes the hair can actually feel better than before you've started. Amazing. So, yeah, I'm just going to go through and apply the roots now with the, the sorcery, which is our dark inky indigo. And yeah, just continue on through and then I'll be popping the elixir on the ends. So aside from this kind of um, style and placement, are there any other ways that you're enjoying using the fantasy collection? Yeah, you can use them so many ways. Um, I actually have been experimenting with pastelizing them as well, which is a really nice way to introduce clients to colour if they haven't had vivid shades before. Um, especially ones that maybe they have a job where they're not really sort of able to have bright, bright colours. Um, there's been a lot of people obviously going to festivals at the moment and things like that. And I think to be able to pastelize something, for example, the uh, elixir, which is the purple, um, pastelize that down. We have a clear, so you can you can pastelize that down. Once it's on the hair, it is like the most beautiful, soft kind of like lilac-y violet. So, so, so pretty. And then the client can go to the festival, have the hair like that for the weekend. And then if they need to, they can come back and have it removed. So we have a colour remover called Blank Canvas. Um, I'm not sure if anybody watching has ever used that. To this day, it still absolutely blows my mind. It is an absolute game changer and it just gives clients so many options to be able to, to play around with. And then they don't have to worry when they go back to work. They can, they can come and get that completely removed and that will take you completely back to the blonde that you started with. And how long does that process take or is it dependent on every client? Um, it does depend on each client, but it's very, very quick. Now, the thing with blank canvas is you do need to work quite quickly with it. It does actually work very, very fast. Um, so you can leave it on the hair for up to half an hour. I recently removed a pink um, from one of my clients hair for that reason, because she needed to go back to work. And she came in and it was it was still quite vibrant actually. We used quite a dark pink. There's actually a video up on my Instagram, I think of that if anyone wants to check it out. But I basically, as I'm applying hit like here now, I'd started to do the bottom two sections. By the time I'd got onto the second and third row, the first two sections, the pink was already gone. Okay. So we actually ended up applying the back. I had to stop, rinse that off because it was, it, that's how quick it was. Wow. You can use it, you can leave it on to develop for up to 30 minutes. And sometimes you may need to do that, especially for the darker shades. But the more pastel the shade, honestly, it will be probably seconds. It will be minutes that that colour will come out of the hair. So it just makes it a bit more, I think it just makes clients have a lot more options really. And the ones that maybe were a little bit apprehensive to try things before, I think they, it gives them the option to try it without the worry that they then can't take it out if they don't like it or if they want to have a change. So kind of new, new innovation and kind of colours like Pop Riot has brought out with the fantasy collection. Yeah. Why are they so integral to artists like yourself? Um, I think it's really important. I think the more colour choices, the better. I think it gives us a chance to play around. One of the main things that I love about Paul Briar is that every single color in the semi-permanence is intermixable. So it really gives you the freedom to, I mean, you can just make your own shade. A lot of my clients, they have custom colors. I have to make sure I write them all down because sometimes when you're making it, if you don't write it down, they're like, I loved that. What was it last time? You have to remember. You have a system for writing it down, just any kind of tips for colorists. Um, a pen and a paper. Yeah, um, old school. 
just have to make sure that I remember. Um, but yeah, and also because it, a lot of the time with these kinds of colours, my clients do like to keep up with them. They don't always want to remove them. So I also give them like take home pots to take home so they can top up the colour themselves. Um, or you can mix it in with your conditioner at home and then it just deposits a little bit of the pigment as you're going through. Um, anything to kind of make it last longer, really, because they do fade over time, um, depending on how much you wash it, what you're washing it in. Um, I normally say to wash in cold water, which, although at the moment, that's quite nice. I must admit, my cold hair washed when it was 40 degrees, was it? Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it really depends on how long the client wants it to last for. Um, but yeah, you can top the colours up at home. If you have, if you have a colour that's easy, obviously, if you have like lots of different rainbow colours or something like that, that's going to be a lot harder. But for something like this, particularly on these ends, which we've got, are going to be purple, you can just run that through at home. So, yeah, I think it just gives people a lot more option. I mean, really, the possibilities are endless. And I think I do think people's attitudes as well, to be honest, since since lockdown and everything, people are starting to experiment more with their hair. And I do think workplaces are a lot more relaxed. I think, yeah, people people seem to be really into it now. And I just think anything goes and. I think that's great because to be honest, there used to be a bit of a stigma around people potentially wandering around with brightly colored hair, like, oh, they must be in a rock band. Oh, look at them with their bright colored hair. Now I'm just like, doesn't matter. Anyone can have whatever they want. And I think that's brilliant. Yeah. I think we were talking a little bit earlier before we went live about um, a report that had been done by um, L'Oreal and it was a salon and consumer report in 2021. And it showed 36% of clients want to experiment with vivid colors. Yeah. Um, you know for the reasons that you just said it's because attitudes have changed like it's no longer a sign of you know you don't just have to be in a creative industry to rock a bright color um, and yeah. and do you think the pandemic has kind of accelerated that with you know people working from home and different I, kind of work-life balance yeah I actually do I think in some ways it's kind of really helped it I think, oh, just get my little towel, just a quick reminder, wipe your hands in between, guys. <laughs> the colours don't smudge into each other, but obviously when you're doing a blend, you need to keep it clean. So yeah, always have a towel handy. Um, yeah, I do think that's really, really helped, actually. Um, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. I mean, I, I have a really wide range of clientele. Um, and I think my it used to be maybe a younger crowd that would be like oh can I have some pink or can I have some green or something I mean I've got clients now one of my ladies is in her late 60s and now every time she comes in she's like oh, what can we do can I have rainbows at the front I don't know it's just made everybody kind of just be like why not like I can just have yeah. what I want. yeah um, I'm gonna pop the purple through the ends now so you can see that's the darker inky kind of blue purple at the top there which is sorcery now the colors are very very pliable they're very creamy so you can see here i'm just smudging that blue down with my hands um and then you can apply that purple straight over the top and then it's very you can see they they merge together extremely well and with these colors what you won't get is you'll never get i could be blending through here i could be blending through a black into a orange and when you merge that together you're not going to get that kind of muddy join that's the other thing that I really like with this brand you you don't get that you get a seamless blend you don't get kind of like a strange color in the middle sometimes which again just gives you so much more freedom to play around you can kind of mix colors together that ordinarily you wouldn't necessarily mix together so yeah that's always a good one to know as well um, you don't have to have the worry about blending the colours together. You're not going to get any kind of strange tones in the middle. Um, and also, whilst we're on that, that subject, when you're washing off as well, there's you don't have to worry about the colours bleeding into each other. Um, you get a completely clear rinse, which again, a bit like blank canvas, blows my mind. I've spent years and years and years with vivid colours, panicking about washing them off at the basin, um, you know, having to have two two people potentially holding the sections of hair you're kind of like holding your breath rinsing it thinking that it's all going to smudge together now with this you don't have any worries about that at all you don't get any bleeding anything like that you can just rinse it confidently and the colors just yeah they don't run onto each other either which is brilliant and like with all of the pulp riot ranges this is a vegan formula it is yeah. 
vegan, which I absolutely love. Um, also, like I say, with the natural ingredients, you've got quinoa in there, which is a natural protein. Um, you've got the enrichment that comes from the plant butters. Um, honestly, and also something which you guys probably aren't going to be able to get because we don't have smell of vision but if anybody has smelt this color it's unreal it's almost like a perfume it doesn't even smell like it doesn't smell anything like color i think as well for clients it's one of the first things when they try this for the first time that they pick up on and they're like oh my god what's that smell and i'm like no that's that's the color they're like whoa it smells so good like honestly it's almost like flowers it's so lovely so yeah it's really really nice I guess because really? it's a conditioning formula as well, it almost adds to that kind of experiential. Because yeah. like to leave in the chair being like, hey, my hair smells amazing and it's incredibly soft and it's not what I expected from, you know, the old school vivid colours of, you know, Absolutely. 10, 20 years ago. Absolutely. And the shine, the shine yeah. is unbelievable because it is a conditioning product I think and also what you're not doing is when you're washing this off you're just it goes on to clean dry hair so that wouldn't have already been conditioned so when you rinse it off you're not shampooing um which again clients are like oh aren't you gonna aren't you gonna wash it out and it's like no no like you know the hair it encapsulates in the hair so actually the color is absorbed into the hair and that's why when you rinse it off you get the clear rinse because the pigments have actually been encapsulated within the hair and um, so sometimes when you develop this you can develop it between 20 to 40 minutes if I've got the time I always like to do it for 40 minutes because to be honest that's you're going to get the longest out of it after five minutes of application you're going to get a true tone so if you wanted to do a little strand test in the salon after five minutes that tone would be as it would be after 40 minutes it's just obviously it wouldn't last that long so 20 minutes um you can you, you can do if you're in a bit of a rush 20 25 minutes and it will last for a good while but if you've got the time to do 40 minutes development then you will you'll notice that the product actually almost hardens on the hair um which basically is where it's encapsulating so when you rinse that off you get absolutely no residue it's it's quite insane actually when you when you see it um and then that will make the color last the longest um the shades all of them fade true to tone as well which is another absolute bonus for me um you don't get any any surprises when the color fades so this purple will fade to a lighter purple fade to a lilac then straight back to blonde you don't get any kind of you know green greeny tones anything like that when it fades um, which again for the client you know the color they have on their hair i think if people have are happy to go for a bolder color i actually think it's it's better in a way because they're almost getting like two looks out of it yeah. so they get look and then as time goes on they get the pastelized version and then they kind of are back to their blonde and then usually they're back to their next appointment so yeah it's really amazing good yeah um and before I ask my final question, I just want to kind of shout out to people watching that feel free to drop any um, questions that you've got in the comments box, um, either on the live or after the live as well. And we'll we'll pick those up and make sure they get answered by Charlotte or Pop Riot if you've got any specific kind of formula questions or anything like that. Um, so we've also learned from the report that I mentioned earlier that vivid color clients are spending twice the average amount of money on their hair which is remarkable so for anyone that's kind of watching this and maybe hasn't dabbled in vivid colors before as a business why is it it's clearly a, a huge kind of earning potential that salons might not be open to um why should they be open to it um i think it opens up your client base for one i think it gives clients a lot more options and also it can be more expensive because usually the hair does need to be pre-lightened. Obviously, these shades, they do work from a base seven up, um, but mostly people want to get the vibrancy and you're not going to get the vibrancy unless the hair is lightened really to like a sort of nine or a ten. Um, so it's obviously the, the process also that you have to go through before the vivid colour is applied. Um, to get your hair to the right shade, which sometimes can make it more costly. Um, I think for, for salons, it's 
there's a real potential there but then equally you know you can you can kind of do things to suit everybody's budget it doesn't have to be ridiculously expensive if people maybe are on a smaller budget you can kind of incorporate like at the moment with like the 90s trends and stuff being a big thing money pieces and things like that are really really in I've had quite a lot of clients that are blonde and they're like oh you know I kind of quite fancy a pink money piece I mean that's something that's really quick and easy and that is a way that you can incorporate a vivid but it doesn't have to be you know a very a very expensive bill but equally you know they it's they can be I think for clients for clients I don't know I think since the pandemic I just feel like people want to spend that money on their hair they want money on themselves and you know as a salon if you if you're not doing vivids I think yeah it's, it's a potential opportunity miss definitely to get different kinds of clients through the door and obviously to to really boost the income as well and I guess with the clients who are spending um kind of more on vivid color they're also being inspired by the artists themselves from what you know you put out on social media or this new collection such as the fantasy collection and you're like oh my god look at these new shades you could try so I guess it becomes more of a a, a relationship builder as well because you want to be adventurous with your client and they want to mix it up and try new things and like you said with the um, kind of color removing innovations that you've got they really like the whole color world is their oyster they can try whatever shades absolutely really interactive actually when you're in the salon with the clients and I don't know my clients seem to really really like it um they can get involved you know with I've even been there you know I don't know if any of you have ever used the color mapping book so or any you know before I do vivid colors particularly if we're going to put like a panel in say if we were going to do something like this where you've got multiple colors and you'll just paint them to be honest even on one of these little um disposable towels like paint the colors on hold them up and they can kind of have a little look if that and color they're like oh do you know what i really like that green but i would actually prefer it if it was a bit more yellowy then we can literally completely make the color and they can get involved and they really like that actually it's kind of like a little it's like an art session <laughs> like they want to get involved but i think that's really good it just makes the experience completely different for them to like just popping in and getting your you know getting your roots done it is actually it's nice for that you know it's a completely different experience really so do you want to give us a kind of recap of what you've done um today so so far as we kind of wrap up the session worries um so i haven't quite made it through all the application but my client here's got quite a lot of hair um, <laughs> um so underneath here what i've done is the finished look so i've used i've used three of the uh colors from the new fantasy collection three of my favorites so you've got sorcery through the top here, blending into elixir through to the ends. You've got guardian, which is the greeny, I don't want to say lime because it's not lime, but it's just obviously yeah. in, so pigmented. It's just like yeah. the, the green yellow. Um, and then underneath here, I actually, I had to play around yesterday. And this just is a perfect example here. If I just section this hair off and show you guys. I actually created a different colour. Now, this is a perfect example of the kind of stuff that we do in the salon. So can you see through here on the money piece? That light colour, it doesn't quite pick up on camera. It's actually quite minty green and the lighter, more kind of pastely purple. I don't know if you guys can see through yeah. the edge there. So that's still using only those three shades. Yeah. Is I used um the clear we do have a clear so when you want to dilute the colors you can use a clear so i actually use clear now in this mint green shade here would you believe that this dark all of these dark colors including that green every single one of those colors mixed with clear has made that color cool. so almost like a very very soft greeny gray in life it does actually look more mint green it's a shame the camera's not quite picking up the greeniness but um, and then through the ends here, I've just diluted the purple, um, the elixir with clear. So that just shows you here, if I bring up some of the darker ends, where are we? I just thought, always like to do like a focal piece around, around the front really, like a money piece. But if you see the difference of that, so it's a little yeah. bit size, it's really, really pretty. But that also would give you an idea of how, when your color fades, that kind of tone through there is probably once this actually wears off fades down that's more what you're going to end up with which is like your pastelized version so it's really pretty really really pretty so yeah just diagonal sections through 
it's a really, really simple technique actually, but it's very effective. So I always take the sections on an angle. So that's creating a little bit of a money piece around the front. And then if the client wants to wear the hair half up, half down, they can reveal different parts of the color. So if they wanted to see more of the green, for example, you can put that half up and then you're gonna get a completely different look through the front there. And then the blend through the top. So it's a really, a really easy way to achieve that, but it's really, it just gives the client like one, basically three different options for how to wear the hair really, just to show the different and parts. And then they've got the, the true to tone fade as well. So they're gonna get a whole different exactly. look in a, yeah, a couple of months time. Fade, nice pastel and eventually it will just have like a really nice soft blonde money piece. So yeah, it's it's just, just a way to show you guys, like it doesn't always have to be the darkest, most pigmented colors. You can create these really pretty soft tones. Yeah with these colors using these colors I mean you would never think that I've made that color using those but you can dilute them and it's amazing like what you can create really so yeah oh amazing thank you so much for talking us through and um, the look and showing us basically the endless creativity that you can have no, with the fantasy collection it's been an absolute treat thank you so much bye bye